We're going in depth on Super Typhoon Haiyan right now with our panel of hurricane specialists. We have Dr. Greg Postel, we have Carl Parker, and we have Michael Lowry. And let's talk about first what the, the picture everyone has seen where they have Haiyan is superimposed on the U.S. Talk about how large this typhoon was. And Dr. Postel, it's kind of misleading when you talk about the size or how things looked with Haiyan. That's exactly right. I mean, the, the size of the cloud field really doesn't matter a whole lot when you think of the weather that's underneath those clouds. Let's have a look at over here at the pixel. And it can show you a comparison side by side. I mean, we've seen this before. And gosh, you know, you look at this and you think, well, they're about the same size, right? I mean, the clouds maybe even with high on extend over a broader region. But I guarantee you that underneath some of these clouds up in here, you can see the sun is shining through those cirrus clouds and the winds are light and variable. This is the of the Gulf of Mexico. It looks like the clouds go up to Atlanta and the west side of Mexico compared yeah. to Katrina, where it was a much kind of more compact cloud field. They're saying this was bigger and stronger than Katrina. Let me put it this way. I've seen a lot of hurricanes this big that are not nearly that strong. So just by looking at the satellite pictures, you cannot tell how big the wind field is really underneath those clouds. We need to look deeper into that. Let's take a look at some of the video of the winds when it was pounding the Philippines here. I want to bring in our hurricane specialist, Carl Parker. Now, we talk about winds. Of course, people, uh, their closest memory is Katrina, the latest uh, disaster to hit the U.S. But in relation to what's going on and what went on in the Philippines, well, the winds compared to Katrina were not nearly as strong or, or widespread as they were in uh, Haiyan. Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, there's this conflation that has gone on in the media between biggest and most intense. And Haiyan was nowhere near being the biggest storm on record. It certainly was one of the most intense on record. When we look at the diameter of the hurricane force winds with Katrina, that was 183 miles. And then when we look at Andrew, it was only 75 miles. It was a far smaller storm, a very intense little dynamo of a storm. And Haiyan was very similar. It was an 86 mile uh, wide diameter of those hurricane force winds. So it's similar to Andrew, but even more intense and arguably not unlike an EF2 or an EF3 tornado over a very large area, over many miles that went on for two to three hours. And so Hurricane Andrew, the last Category 5 to affect the U.S., so you're saying that it was as strong as Andrew in Category 5, uh, but not nearly as big as, say, Andrew, uh, as uh, Katrina was. That's exactly right. And Katrina was a very large storm, so it built up a huge storm surge. When there are large storms, they can pile up the moderate water more readily, but uh, Michael, I'm sure you can talk about this. Even a small storm that's very intense is also going to do that in a smaller area. Yeah, I mean, really, the story with Haiyan was not the size of the storm. Yeah. It was the intensity and the location of where it made landfall, because storm surge is all about location. It's like real estate, location, location, location. In this case, the track of it put the strongest winds right into Leyte Gulf, into San Pedro Bay. That followed the water up in the top of Monsoon. And you have a specialty in storm surge. You're a storm surge expert. You also did research in this part of the world. And this is the most prolific uh, basin in terms of uh, cyclones in the world. It is, yeah. I mean, you get 26 on average uh, tropical storms in that, in that part of the world. They see almost double, triple the number of hurricanes that we get here in the U.S. So we have a lot of storms that impact this area, but they don't always make it as far south as this storm does, and especially as powerful as it was. This is about the strongest storm as we've ever seen. Yeah, the, the vast majority of these storms move into Luzon, which is the northernmost island in the Philippines, and not nearly as many people live in eastern parts of Luzon, surely because they've had so many storms over the years, and there was a very strong area of high pressure to the north that forced this farther south, and that's why hit these areas that don't get hit very often. And had the storm gone 20, 30 miles further to the south, the storm surge would not be as had not been as nearly as bad as it actually was. And also added to that is the, how fast it was moving. Yes. I mean, we've all talked about how this thing was chugging along to the west, moving at 25 miles per hour. If it were going a little bit slower, Michael, called, the storm surge would have been a lot worse. It would have given time for the water to build up and yeah. pile up along the coast. I mean, it was awful. It was awful. It was, it, the storm surge was actually comparable to Katrina, um, but it actually could have been a little bit worse. And, and on top of that, the rainfall would have been much, much heavier had it not been moving so quickly. And it would have lasted, of course, a much longer time. Generally, the strongest winds went on for about two to three hours. Hard to believe as bad as, as it is right now, it could have been worse if that was moving even slower. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. And let's send it back to you.